All right, let's talk about some interesting uh, observations here. You know, once you see something, it's hard to unsee it and you start to look at things through a certain lens. And I'm gonna go ahead and again, delve a little bit into this uh, lipid energy model that, that has been sort of uh, put forth uh, recently. Uh, and so in light of that and looking at this study, it, it seems to make sense to me. So there's a study looking at cardiovascular outcomes among type one diabetics, and it is related to how much insulin they're using. What they found out is, not surprisingly, those that used the most insulin had the greatest rates of cardiovascular disease, right? And that, that seems to make sense. And why might someone use more insulin? Well, they're consuming more food, they're using more energy, maybe they're consuming more carbohydrates, uh, and so their insulin requirements go up and their usage goes up. And that's correlated with a number of traditional, car traditional cardiovascular risk factors, right? And so what they saw is those that use the most insulin got fatter, gained the most weight. Those that use the most insulin sort of often had higher hemoglobin A1Cs. Those who use the most insulin uh, had a higher triglycerides. Those who use the most insulin had lower HDL. And you're saying, well, all of those, obesity, high hemoglobin A1C, uh, high uh, triglycerides, low HDL, are all traditional markers of cardiovascular disease, and that sort of lines up. The problem they got into was that they noticed that those that used the most insulin, who had the worst cardiovascular events, had lower, lower LDL cholesterol. Now that's, you know, in the, in the sort of the uh, discussion, they, they sort of try to figure out why that is. It's confusing, it's complicated, right? It's complicated, it doesn't match our uh, sort of belief system. Why would someone who has lower LDL, again, have higher rates of cardiovascular disease in this cohort? And, you know, I mean, why they have low LDL in this situation makes sense when you look at it through the lens of a lipid energy model. Remember, lipid energy model says that when our cells are full, right, our peripheral cells, our fat stores, our glycogen stores are full up, then we're going to traffic less fat in the blood. And that's exactly what we see here, I believe, because when we consume, uh, when, we, when, we're eat, when we're taking more insulin, we're shoving fat and glucose into our cells. And then our liver says, hey, I don't need to send that much out. Conversely, when our cells are depleted, glycogen depleted, fat depleted, we're leaner, then our liver says, hey, we need to ramp up you know, energy production out to the cells and therefore we're gonna see higher levels of cholesterol. So it makes sense in a lipid energy model why these people that have more insulin, fatter cells, don't traffic as much LDL, total cholesterol, HDL, remember HDL went down as well. That makes sense there. Now the thing that is, I guess, harder to explain is why do these people with lower LDL have higher risks, higher, develop more heart disease? Again, that doesn't line up with what we think it does. Again, maybe it's more than just about LDL cholesterol. Maybe, maybe this whole insulin resistance and metabolic health plays an equally important or perhaps more important role in the determining who goes on to develop cardiovascular disease. So entering another study, again, that you just have to see this, this observation of what's going on here. Anyway, I'll link that, that study that I, I'll link that study in the description. You guys can read it if you want. It's kind of a, you know, it's a little bit of a, a thick study, uh, but if you want to check it out. Let me know what you think. All right, guys, you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.